Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. Hope y'all all having a wonderful Friday today. We are learning all about the finger leather today, or a lot of them called the devil's hand leather coral. Very unique coral. It grows crazily, and some of them even have some really good colors to get. Prices on them, you can expect to spend about $40 to get one, and that's getting one, you know, a pretty decent size. And of course, for the ones that are crazier colors or larger, you will spend a little bit more money for them. Care level, I would say easy. You know, they're not a bad coral to take care of. Most leathers are pretty easy. They grow fast too, and you don't have to do much actual spot feeding for them. Temperature, you want to keep it 72 to 78. You know, I like to keep my reef right on 78, keep it warm for them. DKH, H of 12, pH 8.1 to 8.4, and your salinity 1.023 to 1.025. Definitely want to have a good slow acclimation for these guys. A lot of leathers will stress pretty bad when shipping and when going from the fish store to your house. So make sure you got a nice drip going on them. Nothing too fast to harm them. Colors. So usually what you're seeing is browns and tans and like a yellowish color. That's the most common. That's the ones you're going to be paying that $40 for to get one. Now some of the crazier colors that you'll spend a little bit more, they have some green ones that are like lime green, very pretty, and I've even seen some blue ones. Some of those devil's hands will come in a blue coloration that can be very pretty, especially when those white polyps come out on top of it. It can be a really nice coral to look at. Origin, so most of them are aquaculture now. You know, you have people that are fragging them. They're very easy to frag, so a lot of times whenever you're getting them, you're just getting them from people who have been fragging them and growing them in their own tank. But they do originally come from Indonesia, Fiji, the Great Barrier Reef, everything around there. Venomous, so yes, they are venomous, but not in the way an anemone is where they sting on the edge of their tentacles. They can actually produce toxins on their skin that can hurt surrounding corals. So those toxins will sit right on top of the skin and any surrounding corals that might touch them or even not even touch them, just be near them. It can really hurt them. We had a tank that had a ton of Kenya trees in it, and we could not figure out why the surrounding corals were always staying so shrunk up. And we kept realizing that they were actually producing this toxin, and it was just killing the corals around them, and they couldn't stand it. So we actually had to end up moving them. So definitely give them some room to grow. They're going to get pretty big, and they get big pretty fast. So you definitely want to have plenty of room for them to grow and no surrounding corals. That way, you don't have to worry about them getting hit by that toxic placement so really anywhere for this guy he does well in all areas of the tank a lot of times we like to put them at the bottom because it helps us not put surrounding corals around them also gives them the entire sand bed to grow on and he can grow upwards it's just easier to move corals around whenever that one's at the bottom Another thing to remember is leather corals grow in all directions left right up and down sideways so any corals that are below them, it will definitely cause a shadow. Especially when growing like toadstool leathers. Whenever they get big, a lot of people will put them up top and then they end up just creating this huge shadow down the middle of their tank because they get so big. So definitely think of that on where you want to put them because anything below it can eventually have that shadow on them and they won't be able to get the light that they need. Current, I would definitely recommend a strong current, at least medium. That keeps good flow on him for him to eat. Also keeps algae and debris from sitting on top of them. That can cause issues with their skin. You definitely do not want that. You know, fish food that blows around, algae that blows around, debris, anything. A lot of times they create these little crevices in between the little fingers that grow. And so that debris will sit on top of them. And that just hurts them, creates ammonia. And you just don't want that on him. So give him a good current blowing across him. And he will be very happy and clean. And that keeps his colors really nice. Diet. So they are a photosynthetic coral. They are going to be feeding off the light. So as long as you got some good lights up there. They will do very good. They will take liquid food though. So if you have some things like oyster fish, roe. They even have, you know, reef roids is a really popular one. You can mix with your water to produce a food that you can put in your power heads. It'll blow around and those polyps will eat that stuff up. They love it. Lighting. So, you know, medium lighting. If you're looking at par levels, it's usually about 50 to 150. LEDs are great. T5s are really good for them. You do not have to have anything very high end, you know, expensive to grow these kind of leather corals. Just as long as you have enough output 
to help them. If you do have questions about your lighting and you're not sure if yours can grow it, please just shoot it down in the comments or reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you out. Tank size really doesn't matter. You can have any size tank. It's just about making sure that your levels are good. He has plenty of room to grow. And you got a nice light up top. Now, one thing to always remember about leather corals is they do go through a process we call shedding. So the polyps will retract and you'll see almost this waxy film on top of their skin. This is completely normal. It usually lasts about a week and the coral tends to grow in size once it's over and he will end up extending those polyps again. What we've seen is this just allows that coral to get rid of any bad algae on top of it and also prevents any algae from growing on top of it. Because that waxy film will just kill anything that's over it and then they come back looking brand new. So if you do see him kind of hung over and he just looks like he's not doing that good, wait a few days, I can promise you he's gonna kick back up. Now, if it lasts longer than a week, that's when I would start to worry. You definitely wanna check your levels, make sure your parameters aren't out of whack. A lot of times, salinity, ammonia, nitrates, those things can really affect a leather coral. So make sure all those are in check and you should just be going through a normal shedding phase. This usually happens a lot when first introducing them into your tank, and it will usually, once they're settled in, happen about maybe once a month, every couple of months. It's kind of random. You can't really track it that well, but if it does happen, just keep a close eye. Make sure it doesn't last too long. Fragging these leathers are really easy. You can simply cut off an arm and give that piece and glue it to a piece of rubble, and then it'll grow out and you'll have two finger leathers in your tank. One thing I always like to recommend is that cutting a bigger piece is always better than cutting a smaller piece. Pick one that has a lot of good polyps poking out on it. That way he can continue to feed as he's recovering from the injury of being fragged. If you go in there and start cutting little bitty tiny pieces, a lot of times those tinier pieces will not survive the fragging process and you end up just hurting the coral in the end. Now that's everything. That's a good high level. What you need to know about taking care of the finger leathers and if you can have one in your tank. Just a quick little fact, another great thing about these is your clownfish can even host these. I've seen these guys swim up in them, hang out on them, try to bring food to them, anything like that. So if you're looking for something that is an anemone that your clownfish could host, this would be a good one to hit. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Make sure to reach out to me if you got any more questions or if you've taken care of one in your own tank. Leave it down below. Leave your experience down below. That's how we all get to learn more about these. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Check out our other videos. We have a ton out there. It's nuts that the library is in the hundreds of videos that you can watch all about. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your night, and I will see you all later. Hey everybody, it's Brock and today's video is sponsored by Dream Team Forever. Make sure to check out our website as we just released the first ever All About Tees that feature 30 fish and inverts from the series. Click the link in the description to get some for you and your family.